who is going to come out on top it's a little bit of a tougher road for jukum but he's going to have to start it here so let's get started with the grand finals to see who will be our champion for players cup three and we see the empoleon Coming out for Juke and Bulls, Chef and I thought for sure it was going to be Septile. So much so that we didn't even delve into it. Um, and and Jukum always surprising us. That, that's textbook Jukum. Do the unexpected and make it work. So coming off the momentum in this set with Alistair, I actually really like this pick. I think when you're feeling a character and you're confident with them and you think your opponent uh, expects something else, going with that character can give you a huge advantage. And very interestingly... Jukum here using Jirachi. Ooh, yeah, that's very interesting. I don't think that's a pick that I have seen really from him before. He has really gone out of his comfort zone as far as support picks. Wow, huge damage right there, by the way. But also on the other side, we're seeing Diglett from, from Shadowcat. This is a support pick that we have not seen in ages in years i haven't seen anyone pick diglett in a tournament in forever and i know that shadowcat has done some exploration some ladding with it one thing that it does do very effectively is chip damage and and sort of uh lockdown setups but it's an awkward support to utilize here here it's coming out look how slow that is and the chip does come out oh maybe a shield break setup that's what we used to see diglett used for historically here comes the burst Oh, jumps over, and that should be enough. Just needs to land one more small hit there. And the grab is actually one of the highest damage options you can choose right there. Really cool to see it combined into. But yeah, you know, the Diglett uh, was really setting up, you know, a lot of chip damage, a uh, potential shield break there. But does, am, am I wrong in thinking that Empoleon has one of the stronger shields in the game? Or am I... No, you I are remember. Right. The Empoleon is in that top tier in terms of shield HP. Yeah. All right, so maybe that is a guaranteed shield break setup against something that's not Empoleon. It still, of course, put it one hit away. And, oh, that was a uh, not a great timing, I think, for the Diglett. That is one of the downsides of it. Doesn't have the fastest startup that you could possibly get. And so you're not really going to be able to use it defensively like a lot of other supports. Oh, and the wall in field. Yeah, interestingly, Jukum now on the Whimsicott also, which that makes a ton of sense to me. We saw Jukum use this support against Shadowcat in Players' Cup 1 last year, against the Darkrai, actually. So maybe sort of going to the support set, knowing that it would be effective against both of Shadowcat's characters. Jukum looking very strong here. I think Shadowcat may be playing a little bit similarly to how he was against Alistair in that game number one, just trying to find his footing, especially maybe against a little bit of a surprise pick in terms of employee on here from Jukum. But Jukum now, okay, here's the Diglett being used kind of like Jukum uses Snivy. Oh, and the whiff punish on the grab attempt. Jukum closing out game number one. Oh, that the way that that ended was very weird. It like there was a lot of weird pushback, and I don't think Shadowcat realized it was going to be quite so much. And so he went for that grab, pretty far out of range. And then we yeah, saw the full punish. But hey, this Empoleon looks like it's working out. I'm so surprised that we're seeing it. But I mean, that wasn't even a particularly close game. And I mean, things like the Whimsicott didn't even really come into play. So we haven't even really seen the full limit. But we are going to see a support switch coming out from Shadowcat. We are going to see the Amor. Olga over that Diglett, which was a neat little attempt, and we did see at least one setup, however, it didn't end up fully paying off, I think. Yeah, it's really tough to sort of describe the situation with Empoleon in terms of a character. There's few players who play Empoleon at the level of Jukum, really no one. So training for this matchup can be really difficult. It's a matchup that you can go into the lab and theorycraft, and Shadowcat very much known for tackling the game in that matter, breaking the game down, analyzing it, tearing characters apart. But I think in a lot of ways, unless you can apply that in a real match, it can be tough to find your footing. And Jukum's mix-ups are just so creative. So we'll see if Shadowcat's able to sort of lock Jukum down and get that corner advantage that he wants. And thus far, the answer is no, it's been all Jukum. And that, that steel wing, so good. Oh yeah, a super low falling steel wing, catching the counter. Shadow, uh, I'm sorry, Shukum is just in such control of this matchup, making the hard read actually with the Ice Beam to the side. Not a read that you usually see all that often, however, could catch something like a side A from Shadow Cat. And now both supports are available. We are going to see this all avoided. Oh, Very what? nice side dash from Shukum. That was so good. There's so few characters that I feel like they could actually side dash in that position. So using the greater length of the side dash from Empoleon in field phase, so smart from Shukum. 
Yeah, I mean, we talked about it before, but these two players clearly play against each other mm. a lot. I mean, the fact that they started off with such unique support picks and they already are making some really heavy reads shows that uh, they, they just have that level of comfortability where they don't need to like feel each other out and they can go for some more obscure choices. But here we go at the corner. Uh, Shadowcat having to use the burst to try to get out of this pressure. And look at this, we're seeing so much of this 4X. Oh, but this is a big conversion. Are we gonna see the, con oh no, actually not a full combo, a big drop right there. And burst of Jukum's own to counter. So Jukum really waiting to pick a spot when he can Aqua Jet in here. And he actually goes in and Aqua Jets and then cancel, excuse me, doesn't Aqua Jet, cancels to a Steel Wing. But now Shadowcat picks it up with an Amolga. Double flame charge cancel, and now in the corner, resets, 10 seconds on the clock. That's gonna be a punish. Shadow Cat is on the board. Ooh, yeah, an uncharacteristically uh, kind of messed up execution steel wing right there. You do try to hit the other character on the top of their head, so it does hit twice, becomes safer, does a lot more chip, and Brankson is a bit of a short character, so it is a lot more difficult to do that than, say, for example, against Mewtwo, uh, which we saw uh, earlier, but, this is still unfortunate that you see a drop like that, and Shadowcat okay, getting the first round in the set that he has uh, is a pretty big deal. Yeah, and Jukum just really setting the offense here, but now Shadowcat spacing very effectively. Great <laughs> use of the defog to clear out the Emolga. Uh, we are two for two now on really cool ways to deal with Emolga off of cancels, that's pretty unbelievable. But clearly, Jukum with that experience and yeah, Defog doing so much work in this matchup, look at that. Oh, and he's got him in the corner, the burst is coming out. Shadow, or Jukum without the option to burst against Shadow Cat, and this is gonna have to be some defensive play to try to wait this out. Yeah, Jukum playing so patiently here, and it's been very effective. Tries to jump out of the corner, though, and Shadowcat releases counterattack just perfectly to catch Jukum's jump. That's not easy to do. Now, stuffing out the Aqua Jet, this is going to go into an Emolga, and Shadowcat in a strong position here. A little bit of a drop in the corner again. That's so uncharacteristic of a player like Shadowcat, but he's sort of happy to keep and pulling on knockdown in the corner here, not able to get any offense started. Oh, and catches the grab. You can see that was actually really close to a comeback. Uh, the fact that he blocked and took so much chip right before that final moment meant that it was pretty much a mix-up situation that is advantageous on block for Empoleon. So just, you have to guess there, is it going to be strike? Is it going to be throw? And it was throw, and he knew. So this is, of course, I would have to assume that this is a set that's going to go back and forth considering these two players and their familiarity with each other. Yeah, absolutely, Chef. And, and, you know, now the more that I think about the Empoleon pick, in addition to the reasons why I said earlier, I think one of the things that made Shadowcat so strong in Players' Cup 1 was really his ability to play, play effective and excellent footsies in neutral. And in some ways, Empoleon is the perfect way to shut that, shut that down. This is not a character that's going to play a sort of footsie game. He plays this really active pressure style game where he's zoning you at full screen so it shuts down that whole part of shadow cat's game and forces him to play differently oh, oh made the 8y anti-air whiff gets over him but now uh jukum's the one in the corner and he does get walled this time not finding a cool way to avoid the amolga and it's gonna be a speed debuff jukum getting all or sorry shadow cat getting all the buffs that he wants so he's just got to find a few strong hits here there's a single oh. hit of the Steel Wing. That's what you've been mentioning, Chef. You're really trying to time it so both hits of the Steel Wing hit, otherwise it makes it unsafe. So a great reaction from Shadowcat in that situation, knowing he could punish this single hit Steel Wing. And Shadowcat doing, uh, getting caught actually. Shadowcat looking very strong, but just Jukum doing such a great job showing how one Aqua Jet can completely shut things down. Yeah, yeah, almost made the comeback there. But you know, another thing that I want to point out is that we do see Juka moving back to his classic support set. Mm -hmm. We haven't really had too much of a chance to actually see it come out, but the Snivy and Lapras that have uh, really been the key support set through, I want to say, the past several years, pretty much the entire time that Jukum's been playing. And there we go. Lapras so good at eliminating those projectiles, but this is get quite close enough. It's really hard to space that, especially if your opponent is just barely moving back. And let's see, yeah, no good escape here. Another good usage of a Molga from Shadow Cat. And this is looking still pretty even. First for both. 
Yep, this field phase could be really important just in terms of spacing and how this plays out. So Shadowcat not able to get the ship there, doesn't have the Emolga to go into. Jukum Aqua jetting in, Shadowcat sticking to those side Why is such an effective tool in field phase for breaks in. Neither player wanting to overcommit here, and now Jukum does commit at least to burst, and now Shadowcat a burst of his own. Oh, this is where the damage can become ridiculous. And the chip, honestly, on both sides. I mean, even without Burst, the chip on both sides of this matchup is potentially huge. Wow, whiffs the Aqua Jet. That is going to be a conversion. It's going to be a wall. He's going to go into... I like the fact that he walked back first just to make it a little bit easier. And that is going to uh, renew the Amoka. I mean, I think it's the biggest thing here. This is going to be scaled a lot. The damage isn't going to be too significant against Jukum. Yeah, as you can see there, I mean, that was only something like 80 damage. But... Emolga's back, and immediately another conversion to it right in a row. These side Ys in field phase have been posing such a problem, and it's so tough for Jukum to get in. It, his walk speed was going to be so slow with his speed debuff. He was almost forced to Aqua Jet into closed space there. And now he is in a good position here. He's going to absorb that with the Labyrinth. Shadowcat getting over there. And now Jukum with the HP lead. Just one second left, and Jukum does take game number three in the last seconds there over Shadowcat. I I truly thought that went the other way. I I mean, I need like an instant replay. That was so fast. I thought that the Psybeam hit and that Jukum lost, but it looked like maybe just that the jump Y hit right before the Psybeam and was just barely able to get the KO in time. That was, I mean, that was so close. That was down to literally one hit. Both of them had projectiles out and literally down to the final second. So I am uh, I'm glad that we're seeing it go as it is. Yeah, and Jukum just doing such a good job playing the role of the aggressor here. Staying active and getting in, you know, not letting Shadowcat sort of sidewise deter him. Shadowcat, though, with a really nice grab there, finding an opening. It's going to give him time to Sunny Day. And then Ops, not for a second Sunny Day, didn't want to get called out with an Aqua Jet in that position. Um, so just taking what he has. But there's an Aqua Jet coming out. And Jukum's mix up, Chef, with the Aqua Jets. He's just finding these holes in Shadowcat's game plan so effectively. Yeah, he's just perfect at finding those moments. And I mean, that's a big way that he plays the character in general. We saw that against Alistair too. But right now, we are on reset point for Jukum. He just needs to win one more. And I can't believe that this Empoleon is working so well. Uh, I mean, we're seeing the full commitment to the breaks in, which I mean, normally, I mean, I don't feel like anybody would say like, oh, don't ever pick breaks in against Empoleon. But right now, it doesn't really matter who you use. Jukum is just the Empoleon master. Oh, and Shadowcat going for the flame charge cancel. But again, Jukum just ready with the perfect timing on an Aqua Jet stuffing him out. There's another Aqua Jet. This one, level one Aqua Jet right up close next to Shadowcat and not being deterred at all. Jukum finds himself in the corner here. This could be tricky, but a nice use of Lapras to get in and catches oh. Shadowcat. Shadowcat not quite able to make the full jump over. Oh, and that kind of track's going to hit. We're not going to see a full conversion here, but of course it's going to be Oki and a big read here. 2Y probably expecting the potential of a grab, but one way or another, the 2Y into the burst is going to connect. Mulga was already up, and this will do a decent amount of damage. 2Y scales quite a bit, but not a huge amount. Yeah, you can see still at about 169, and burst is available. Oh, wow, and plus he lands another hit. I think almost nothing. Yes. Shadowcat walking into the Ice Beam, just the lasting hitbox there. That was very strange. But now Jukum in a really strong position here. Tons of momentum, full burst, 30 seconds left. Any trade here is going to really be in Jukum's favor. Okay, Shadowcat with the knockdown of the Emolga. Now Jukum in a burst. Oh no, but that damage is potentially huge. Doesn't get the full conversion. Still has the opportunity to really just one more hit at the corner. The Aqua Jet is going to get Jukum out. His burst is starting to run out. He has the Lapras. He has potential chip. Tries to punish the light screen. I love that option, but he's not going to get it. And this, oh, the patient points. The patient points. It's not enough. Absorbs the Ember with the Lapras. Able to go through just five seconds left on the clock. Shadowcat needs a hit here. He can't go to time. That's going to give Jukum the game and take us back. And Jukum does it. Jukum resets in grand finals. Wow, he got over the Emolga, but I didn't think he was going to be able to punish using the Steel Wing hitbox perfectly. That completely...